Um, hey everyone. Uh, so uh, to give you some context, uh, Jen and I are uh, from New York. And so we thought it'd be fun for this demo to uh, create a dashboard uh, from scratch for 311. So if you don't know what 311 is, uh, it's New York City's non-emergency phone number. So if you have a pothole uh, outside of your apartment, if maybe you saw a cute furry creature scurry out of the kitchen of a restaurant, um, or if you just want to know what time garbage gets picked up tomorrow, you would call 311. So 311 has really great data around call volumes. And so for this demo, uh, we're going to pretend that we work at the ops department at 311 and try to build a dashboard to make sure we could track all the things that are important to us. So let me share my screen and we could get started. Okay, great. So this is the retool editor. And so you'll see that we have a query uh, to our data warehouse, BigQuery, which is where potentially our 311 ops team stores their data. And so we could run it and get some of the metrics that we really care about. So for example, I think it's really important to be able to track the amount of calls that are coming in per month to 311, as well as how long it's taking us to close cases when someone calls in. Is it taking us you know, close to a month to be able to say that yes, that pothole's fixed, or are we able to get to it a lot faster? It's hard to just look at this data and be able to tell what's going on. So it'd be great if we could start to visualize it. So let's put all on a chart here and point it at our query. Great. So you'll see very quickly, we're able to take data that's coming out of our BigQuery data warehouse and visualize it almost immediately. So this is great, but we probably want to customize it a little more so that everyone knows what they're looking at. So we'll add a title, calls volume, uh, maybe a y-axis title, we'll say calls, um, and then start to work with some of these data sets. So requests are also really just calls, so we could rename that here and maybe give it a different color. Close requests, we're probably not that interested in seeing, so we could actually just hide it here. And then for average days to close, we'll give it a more user-friendly name. We won't aggregate it. And then maybe we'll even make it a scatter plot and a little bit nicer to see. Okay, cool. So as you can see, almost immediately, uh, we could tell that less calls coming in towards the beginning of the year. And then during the summer month, they really picked up to almost double what was there before. So that's great. But you'll notice that it's really hard to tell what's happening with these average days to close. And that's because our y-axis right now is in the hundreds of thousands and our days to close are only you know, 22 or so days. So it'd be really nice to be able to visualize kind of on the same chart, both these things. And so what we really need is a second axis. And if you notice on the right-hand side here, there's actually no way to add a second axis in the UI form. And that might be a little frustrating and you might feel like you're stuck. But as Jane mentioned, the really cool thing here is that we could always flip into this plotly mode which generates for us all the JSON that we needed from the UI form, but also lets us add our own in case we want to do anything custom. So in order to add a second y-axis, I'll actually just Google Plotly second y-axis to get some documentation on how to do it. Great. And so we'll notice that to add a second y-axis, we'll kind of need two things. We'll need this y-axis two in the, in the layout component. So we'll copy and paste that into there. And then we also need one more thing, which is um, we need to specify which part of which data series needs to have the second y-axis. So we'll hop over to the data portion. We'll find our average days to close and we'll add that second y-axis there. And voila, you'll see that we now have a second y-axis and it's really, really clear what's going on. Again, during the beginning of the year, it seems like our days to close were a lot higher. They creeped up again towards the summer and then start to actually go down very nicely towards the end of the year. So that's really great. It's awesome that we can visualize this and see what's going on, but maybe, you know, this, we don't have a lot of context. We don't know if this is good or not. Is seven days to close what we expected when we planned our goals towards the beginning of the year? Maybe, maybe not. So it'd be great to be able to visualize this all in one place. Unfortunately, the OKR meeting that we had didn't actually end up with goals inside of our BigQuery, right? Um, we usually plan in these big meetings and end up with Google Sheets that have our goals listed out. And so how, how do we get this on here? And I think this is where Retool is actually really powerful because we're able to pull in all these disparate data sources and get them all on one place. So we could have a Google Sheets query that reads from our Google Sheet that we spent a long time putting together that has all our goals for how long it should take to close an issue. Um, and so you'll see by month here, the, the goals. And so we could actually just add this on to the graph. And that's really easy. All we have to do is add another trace here. We'll copy and paste for the sake of time, but you'll see that all it does is reference that this get goals query. And now we have this great line that we could track and see that, you know, towards the beginning of the year, we weren't doing so well. 
but actually the last five months have been really, really great. And we should pat ourselves and the team on the back for being able to stay under our goals for the last five months. Awesome. Uh, so now we have kind of this one chart that allows us to track month by month how we're doing and make sure that we're meeting our goals. But if you remember earlier when I kind of talked about 311, there's a lot of departments that fall under the 311 umbrella. And actually, 311 ends up routing calls to a bunch of different places maybe the Board of Education, maybe the Department of Transportation, uh, maybe the Department of Health, depending on where it needs to go. So for us, it's probably really important to understand how do these calls break down by department and which departments are taking longest to close their request. And so we might write a different query that gets the calls and breaks them down by the type of department that they end up going. And so, you know, we could run this query and start to visualize it. And so one really cool thing about this charts component that Jane mentioned is that, you know, we're not bound by just line charts or bar charts or histograms. We could kind of do whatever we want here. We're only bound to really by our imagination. So for the purposes of this demo, I thought it'd be fun to make a bubble chart of, of our broken down uh, calls by department. So let me copy and paste some pre-prepared plot leaders on here um, just to show you kind of really how powerful this is. Awesome. Let's get some layout in here. Great. So now we actually have the distribution by agency and you'll see this top part of the charts shows the amount of calls that are coming in. And we could very quickly see that the NYPD is fielding most of these calls, but this bottom chart shows how many days to close different requests are taking. And you'll see that even though they get a lot of calls, they're closing their issues out very, very quickly. On the other hand, something like the Department of Health is actually taking 124 days to close requests while only getting about 73,000 calls all year. And so being able to visualize this very quickly tells us maybe like the problem areas or departments that potentially need more staffing or resourcing in order to field the volume and or close out requests a little bit faster. Cool. And so the last thing I want to walk through is actually probably my favorite part of the charting component and the thing that it makes me really excited about the functionality. And that is interactivity. So at the end of the day, each component chart actually exposes the selected points that our user interacts with inside the chart. So if we call this chart something a little bit more descriptive, we'll actually be able to create a query that references what is selected in the chart. So you'll see here, we actually have a where clause in the query that checks what points are selected in the chart and then runs a filter based on that. So what that allows us to do is be able to see, for example, all the open calls per department and make that interactive, uh, not just static. So let's pull on some components here to be able to see what's going on. So let's get a container and maybe we'll add a nice title here, open calls. So these are all the open calls that have not been closed yet and thus might be problem areas for us. We might wanna assign more resourcing to getting them closed so we can get some of these numbers down. So let's pull on a table to display them. And let's make these some of these bigger so we can see what's going on. Great, so this table reads from this query and so uh, what we're able to do is now select some of these departments in the graph and actually have this table update dynamically to only show those open calls. So for example, the taxi and limousine commission has the following open calls and we could read through them and maybe take some action on them. And then if we're interested in maybe um, resetting this and then selecting the department of education, we could see that update live as well. So we could see that there may be some rodent or mice problems in some schools. And that's something definitely we could spend some resources towards solving. So that is at a high level, some of the really cool things you could do with the new charting component. We were able to, in about 15 minutes, put together a chart that shows us call volume across the year, um, make sure we know how we're doing in terms of closing calls, as well as our goals all in one chart. Uh, we were able to break that down by department and then make that chart interactive so that we could select different departments and then have the open calls update automatically in this table. So thank you for going on that journey with me. 